We've had all these tutorials about LV systolic function. But I don't see where ejection fraction fits in. It expresses stroke volume as a percentage of end diastolic volume. It's derived as EDV minus ESV all divided by EDV. Ejection fraction is a very old measure. It was introduced because it was hard to measure absolute cardiac volumes. Can we do that today? Yes. Both echo and MRI give reasonable estimates of volume. MRI is particularly good for this. Years ago, the ventricle was assessed by angiography. One couldn't tell how much magnification there was without a calibration grid. And similarly, with nuclear techniques the radioactive signal was attenuated by the chest wall. Yes. But the errors were the same for systole and diastole. So you could compare them, even if you couldn't tell absolute volumes. And give an idea of how the heart was pumping. So does ejection fraction describe the state of the myocardium? Not really, because it's load dependent. If you reduce preload or after load, then ejection fraction may go up without any change in intrinsic properties of the myocardium. That's the story about the donkey getting up the hill. Okay, so then can we assume that if EF is normal, heart failure is due to diastolic failure? No. A dilated heart which contracts well should have a high ejection fraction and a normal end systolic volume. Be careful of a normal ejection fraction when the heart is enlarged. These patients may still have impaired systolic function. How do we tell? Look at the end systolic dimension or volume. And remember to index it to body size. See how the LV isn't emptying very well? An enlarged LV at end systole is the strongest predictor of death in heart failure. Can you put that in plain English? A strong pump goes bang. Like this. A weak pump goes blip. Got it.